there's an old saying that goes, you're either in the middle of adversity, just got out of adversity, or you're on your way back into an adversity. And isn't that exactly how life is at most times? Of course, there's varying degrees to this, but you don't have to live too long to experience pain and suffering in this world. Welcome back to As For Me In My House. I'm Jordan. And I'm Elena. And on this installment of Thoughts and Prayers, where we ponder audience-provided topics and hold hands in prayer before the throne, we want to share some scriptures to pray, and, and yes, literally pray when you're going through a difficult season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Melina and I, in next week's episode, are going to delve deep in a little bit of how we've been processing and and really clinging to the Lord in this season. As most of you know, we um, miscarried a couple weeks back, and it's been really therapeutic for us to process um, that by just kind of pouring our heart out, and the flood of support has just been we feel undeserving of <laughs> truly, mm-hmm. but, um, we'll, we'll touch more on that next week. So, um, this week though, we wanted to just give us kind of a brief, uh, um, kind of sampler of some of the things that Melaine and I do when we're going through uh, a valley in life. And this has been very fresh on our hearts, obviously, but, mm-hmm. um, what we want to do is just share some verses that we've really clung to in this time. And, uh, just share a little on our process of praying through the scriptures together. Um, a couple of resources that I want to recommend just right off the bat before we get into it is uh, a book called Face to Face, Praying the Scriptures by Ken Boa. It's fantastic if you are trying to get more into a uh, spiritual rhythm and a, a habit and a discipline of um, being in the Bible. And it really enriches it and deepened my prayer life um, before that. I would say my prayer life was very rudimentary and not very like complex. I mean, there's some people that'll pray for hours on the floor, like they'll wet themselves before they get up and leave (laughs) the throne, you know? So I'm just, uh, yeah, that's not my, my strong suit. So this book in particular, among other things have helped me really, uh, get deeper into it. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a book called, just called prayer by Tim Keller. May he rest in eternity. He actually just passed, um, I think, like a week ago when this is going out. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, that was really um, influential book when I was in high school, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So, without further ado, honey, won't you share a verse or a passage that's really yes. um, helped you through a season of adversity? Mine comes from Matthew, and I first actually found a really clung on to this because it was in a worship song and we're going to chat about this in a second but for me the biggest thing is I love finding worship music that's rooted in scripture which honestly should be all worship music True, but that's not always the case and so I love when I find worship music that is like a repetition of scripture because then it just brings it to life it's so much easier to remember and it's so much easier to really grasp what it says and so for me it is matthew while you're flipping that real quick you just mentioned the whole idea of like singing songs from scripture Mm -hmm. that's what the psalms are i mean i think that's a lot of people maybe uh some of them are that. a little lengthy. It's a little <laughs> yeah, but when you go back to the Hebrew, right, the original language, it's very melodic and it's very poetic in how mm-hmm. it is. Arabic's the same way. Mm-hmm. It has like a, a cadence to it or like, yeah. like a harmony to it. So, yeah, it's hard to uh, always convert them th- through languages and then mm-hmm. make it, you know, flow creatively. But in the originals, it would just be like a song so- song. And then these would get inspired by the Holy Spirit and they're in our Bible now. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So this verse is Matthew 6, 26. Now I've probably shared this like a million times. So I'm sorry if you were like, okay, we get it. You love that verse. But it says, look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet our heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Mm -hmm. And I just love that because it just goes to show like, the Lord cares so much even about the birds. Like how much more does he care for us? How much more value are we to him? And how much more will he take care of us if he's taking such good care of the birds? You know, like we are so much more. And then I love what the rest of it says. And it says, and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to this span of life? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the the lilies of the field, how they grow, neither toil nor spin. 
Yeah, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory did not array like one of these. And then it keeps going on. I just think it's so great. And then he talks about you of little faith. Like if you have not, this entire thing that I'm reading, it you can start it at Matthew 6, 25, and it just talks about not being anxious. And I just love this entire section. Honestly, all of Matthew is fire. If you look it through, I have pretty much all of Matthew highlighted. Like it is such a good part. But to me, that was like really something I clung on to. And then being able to sing that as well. Um was super helpful and just knowing that the Lord just cares so much more about us and like mm -hmm. the little birds like they're like this small you know he cares so much more about us what's the name of that song by the way in case people are curious I want to say it's Jaira but it's at the very like end of that song because that song is like 10 minutes long yeah. and it's like after all of the melodies and stuff like there's just like a little part where Naomi is singing and I just like love her voice and so whenever anything that she sings, I'm like, oh, yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. So it's like the very end where she talks about this and reads off that and just talks about how much more he cares for us. Got it. Yeah, it's, that's fantastic. Sure that's from we can link it down below. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, mine's, What's yours? <laughs> mine's very similar in the, keeping I with the same theme. I said that verse to you today, too, which is so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's called. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, this is preaching to the choir here because I've been pretty anxious about a lot of things. Um, I'm not normally an anxious guy. I feel like I'm usually pretty calm and cool headed, but there are mm -hmm. things at times that you just have this false sense of control mm -hmm. throughout so much of life. And I, I know we've talked on previous episodes of this illusion of control. Like we mm -hmm. really don't have control of as much as we think. Mm -hmm. um, Which is so freeing. Yeah. It's freeing, but it's also like humbling when you're like, whoa, I... I'm not in control. I'm not even in control of my next heartbeat, you know? Mm -hmm. And so really looking at the fragility of life and how so much of it is could just be completely gone in a, in a fraction of a moment, you know? Mm -hmm. um, not even speaking like morbidly in life and death, but even just the things that we think are our job security, our houses, like the things we built and create, like so much of that could just be like, what if, there's a grease fire tomorrow morning when your daughter's cooking breakfast, you know, or like, and like your house is burned to the ground or, mm -hmm. or if there's a natural disaster or a flood and you know, like who knows, you could just, your boss could just walk in tomorrow and say, Hey, sorry, we got to let you go. Like we're losing money or whatever, you know, like just mm -hmm. so many things that we think we're in control of and truly nothing is guaranteed. Hey guys, wanted to take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, Relief Band. And if you're like Milana, who unfortunately suffers from migraines or say you've been driving with a friend and all of a sudden they say, hold on, you gotta stop the car and pull over. I'm about to lose my lunch. Then you need to try Relief Band. It is the number one FDA approved anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting associated with things like motion sickness, anxiety, migraines, hangovers, morning sickness, chemotherapy, and so much more. Uh, I'm actually wearing mine right now, and it's really sleek. I like this comfortable silicon band it's got, and you just plug it in, and best thing is it's completely safe and side effect free and drug free. So you don't have to take any medication or anything like that when you start experiencing some of these symptoms. Plus, Relief Band both treats and prevents nausea, so you can help stop nausea from becoming a problem in the first place. It's a must-have for every road trip. So if you've always had a flashlight on hand for a blackout or a first aid kit on hand for emergencies, then you need a Relief Band for those unexpected nausea moments. Right now, we've got an exclusive offer just for As For Me In My House listeners. If you go to reliefband.com and use promo code my house you will receive 20 percent off plus free shipping so head to r-e-l-i-e-f-b-a-n-d.com and use our promo code my house for 20 percent off plus free shipping my verse is first peter 5 7 it's cast your cares on him for he cares for you and other translations say your anxiety on him and mm. i think that's so just kind of God to be be the kind of God for us that he's not afraid of us like coming to him with our worry and concern he's not like uh like sitting there like dad reading the newspaper mm -hmm. and he's like trying to focus on something and you come up hey hey dad hey dad and you're like pulling on his knee he's not like rolling his eyes and like look peeking over his paper yes son you know mm -hmm. he's he's you come to him he's like throws the paper to the side and like right. it's 
like leans in and says, hey, come here, you know, come sit on my lap. You know, that's mm-hmm. the kind of God we have. And so he cares for us and he wants that, like he wants us to bring him his, our anxiety. And that for me, it's, it's not only that he tolerates it, it's that he, he invites us, he, he draws us that way. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's been really comforting for me, um, that he's not intimidated or afraid of us approaching him in these ways. Mm-hmm. So you got another one for us, honey? No. That was it. <laughs> I got one more. Um, Psalm 62, 1 through 2. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, mm-hmm. my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. Amen. And I think that's such a beautiful picture and word picture there where you see, uh, I believe it's David writing, saying, God alone, right? Like there's no... Um, rescue team or you know there's there's not this no one else is going to save your soul and redeem your soul and that's that's purely Jesus right and so from him comes our salvation of course right no one else can give us salvation only Jesus can Mm -hmm. and the this idea of the rock fortress right like there's safety and security and stability in these things and not in everything else that we think gives us that st- mm-hmm. safety and security and stability. Mm-hmm. So I, I, uh, I really resonate with that. And in the last minute or two here, I wanted to just um, give you a practical approach to this. If you're someone that's watching this right now saying like, yeah, I'd like to, uh, I- I'd like to pray through scripture and uh, like apply the very words of the text to my prayer life, especially when I'm going through adversity. Mm. Just want to give you a quick little formula for our approach to how we do this. And this is great if you're just starting off or just getting into the rhythm. But what we do is essentially three things. We'll read the text in our head and then read it out loud. So we're hearing ourselves read it too. Mm -hmm. And then we're getting repetition because things are deeper deeper ingrained in your long-term memory when you read them out loud and you hear them, right? And then we convert that text to a prayer. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do in just a couple minutes is walk through Isaiah 6, chapter 1, 1 through 13. And uh, I'm sorry, 6 verses 1 through 13. And show you just how this would look if you were going through your normal reading of the scripture. Because without belaboring the point, it's good to... I always endeavor to pray before I even crack open my Bible. Like let's just say Mm -hmm. it's your morning time with the Lord, right? I would, I, before I even open the book, I ask, I say, Holy Spirit, speak to me through your word. You're the author. Um, help me interpret, rightly divide and interpret your word, right? And like Jesus said, he would lead us into all truth and he would help us. He would be the one that teaches us, right? Mm-hmm. So even before I crack open that, that, maybe it's a little religious of me, but like even before I open up the cover, that's what I'll pray. It's like, mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, teach me, mm-hmm. help me understand your word. Then I'll do whatever I'm reading, if I'm following a plan or if I'm, you know, studying something in particular, I'll read that. And afterwards, I like to pray through what I just read. And this is what I'm talking about as you're praying through scripture. And then usually it'll conclude like I'll, I'll thank God for, you know, his word and for providing it in this way to read and to absorb. And then I'll ask him to help me recall it to memory. So this is that reading through scripture and praying through scripture. So let's assume I just read this already in my head for sake of time and and uh, and that sort of thing to, without being repetitive. Mm-hmm. Let's just read through. If you got your Bible, if you're able to uh, read through with us, we invite you to. But if not, you could just listen along. And this is Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. 
your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and say this to the people. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and bind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is a desolate waste and the Lord removes people far away and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth, terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. And so... This is not the type of verse that I would like. Well, I'm just saying you can <laughs> you can you can pray for, through. But I'm scripture. curious to see what you're gonna do with it. I mean, it's very very straightforward, right? Like, there's no uh, um, no magic formula to it. You let's say that would be your Bible reading for the day, right? Or that would be whatever plan or whatever you're following would say. Read Isaiah six one through thirteen, and then praying through it would look something like this. There's a couple things that I highlighted and underlined that really just. Whoa, like that jumped out to me. Whoa, the Holy Spirit's like bringing that to my attention. And so I'll go back through and I'll pray as something very simple like this. God, thank you for the words in Isaiah 6. I am in awe of your throne and the description that we have there. Mm. And help me to uh, really grasp as much as I can the, the weight of approaching your throne in prayer, even in this moment. And help me, Lord, to be cognizant of my sin and my unworthiness. Like Isaiah, I am at, I am lost and I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Not Milena. I mean, she's she's good. But, <laughs> but and, and just pray something like, I'm so thankful and so humbled to be, uh, to have my guilt taken away and my sin atoned for, Lord. Thank you for that. Mm. And then to go through and say, help me like Isaiah to be ready, willing, and able to raise my hand, to be burdened with the things that burden your heart. Like Send me to do your work and to be your ambassador in the earth, even when those who whom will receive the message won't hear or won't understand or will, will turn away, right? Mm. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you would... Um, empower me to do these things in Jesus name. Amen. And so that's, that's praying through the scripture, right? And that's just a very simple way to do it. I mean, you could do it with obviously in adversity, there's scriptures and you can even get like a a Naves topical Bible or use online um, study research, research resources to find things topically. Like if you're going Mm -hmm. through loss or grief or depression or anxiety or um, what have you, right. And, to find verses that speak to those things and then to pray through them just like we did together. So Mm -hmm. honey, you got any final thoughts? I don't. That was really good. Cool. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, We love you and just so grateful that you're here with us and we're excited to see you next week and share a little bit more of our heart on how the Lord's been carrying us through this season of grief we're in. So Mm -hmm. until next week, God bless you. Bye guys.